is up everyone? Welcome to yet another episode of Cartoon Fight Club. I'm your host, Animation Rewind, and if you haven't heard, the latest Fatal Conflict, Strider vs. Greninja, released last Saturday. Not a lot of people saw it, so I'd like to re-remind you to go check it out. Though if you have seen that and you know how the game is played, then let's get ready for the fight. For this episode, we have a battle between Scorpion and Scorpion, and spoiler alert, Scorpion does win. So there you go, you have no reason to watch the rest of this video. Scorpion will be the winner. All kidding aside, we have Hanzo from the Mortal Kombat universe taking on the Marvel Scorpion, McDonald G. You know, that sealess Spider-Man villain that's got the really tight scaly outfit. So with all this being said, let's introduce Cartoon Fight Club's next round of fighters. My name's Woody. Scorpion wasn't always the murderous Hellspawn we all know and love. He was originally Hanzo, a member of the Ryu clan. After trying to get revenge on Sub-Zero for killing his family, he got himself killed in the process and was then reincarnated into everyone's favorite Hellspawn, known as Scorpion. Scorpion eventually killed Sub-Zero, but found out that the sorcerer who resurrected him was responsible for his family's death. So Scorpion patched things up with the other Sub-Zero and was also brought back to life when Sonya Blade kicked Quan Chi in the balls or something like that. Mortal Kombat Scorpion is equipped with a kunai and a chain, an axe, and several swords. He also has several elemental based abilities. He has many ways he can manipulate fire, form shooting fireballs, and even breathing from his Ghost Rider ripoff skull. He's also shown to be able to have some levels of earth bending by raising stone pillars from the ground. Some other abilities he has include his great martial arts skills, teleportation, and the ability to have his strength constantly rise in the nether realm. Scorpion is strong enough to break titanium, rip a human's head clean off, and can keep up with many heavy hitters in the Mortal Kombat universe. An example of this would be his ability to combat the Dragon King after he became the Elder God's champion. To give some context, the Dragon King is ridiculously durable. He walked through the combined attack of Raiden, Quan, and Shang all at once as if it was just a gust of wind. Raiden then performed a suicide attack that destroyed the entire palace they were in, yet the Big O stood up without a scratch. This attack was calculated by the good people at Crossover X to require anywhere from 72.42 to 7700 tons of TNT, and this is the kind of force the Dragon King can casually shrug off. The Elder God straight up gave Scorpion the strength needed to actually fight and damage this guy, so his maximum output should be realistically higher. Speed also isn't an issue for Scorpion, he's easily able to keep up with the likes of Reptile who can dodge bullets, making his minimum reaction speed at least Mach 2, combine this with his incredible martial arts skills and teleportation, and you've got someone who's incredibly hard to hit in a match. Now this guy is not perfect, he definitely has his flaws. Mortal Kombat Scorpion, while he is technically already dead, he can also still be killed permanently by soul manipulating attacks and he does have specific physical limits. My name's Woody. One day, J. Jonah Jameson didn't want any more pictures of Spider-Man, which sounds really ridiculous, I know. Instead, he wanted to know how Peter Parker was able to get such great photos of this webbed hero. Because your news reporter handing in essentially selfies of a superhero doesn't immediately raise any red flags to him. Jameson hired a private investigator, a man known as McDonald G, to get to the bottom of this very difficult case to figure out. Difficult as in, I'm pretty sure a seven-year-old like Dora the Explorer could probably piece the puzzles and find out why Peter Parker is getting all these really close, authentic Spider-Man photos on almost a daily basis. Though, if we look at the other spectrum of the story, from Jameson's perspective, figuring this out might even require some super-powered help. So Jameson eventually paid McDonald to be the subject of an experiment which would give him the characteristics of another animal. You can guess where this is going. This experiment made him go insane and take up the supervillain role of Scorpion. Marvel Scorpion is equipped with a Scorpion suit which grants him extra protection against attacks and the ability to attack with the suit's tail via either melee attacks or launching projectiles from the tail's tip. He's even had access to the Venom symbiote in the past which gave him all of Venom's natural abilities including regeneration, camouflage, the spider sense, and the ability to shoot webs even without factoring in his gadgets and alien slime. He's got physical characteristics beyond what any human can reach, as well as the ability to adhere any surface, granting him the ability to wall crawl like Spider-Man. But he prefers to punch things and climb using the holes he leaves. Marvel Scorpion is capable of keeping up with Spider-Man, who has some pretty impressive feats under his belt, such as lifting an iron structure as heavy as a locomotive, supporting a landing plane, dodging lightning attacks from the likes of Electro, and there was even that one time he tagged Quicksilver, that one feat you're probably sick of hearing about if you constantly watch the cartoon. 
Cartoon Fight Night Spider-Man episodes. Even without scaling, Scorpion is pretty tough on his own. He's able to lift 15 tons on his own, and that gets boosted up to 70 tons when he has the Venom symbiote. He even survived beatings from Spider-Man, and even survived his jaw being punched clean off by Superior Spider-Man. Marvel Scorpion, though, is said to be pretty bad when it comes to his defenses from a mental standpoint, and his genetic mutation is highly unstable. If he doesn't have either the Scorpion suit or the Venom symbiote, he will die just from his instability alone. And now, let's get ready for the fight. This battle will take place on Earth, and remember, there is no prep time. Let the battle begin! And if you did, special thanks to Team Animation Rewind's Vegito1089. Also, super special thanks to the MLG Avocado for writing the script and for doing the bulk of the research, as well as the Cartoon Fight Night team, as this entire episode was essentially a remaster of that episode. Thanks, and enjoy the post analysis. <laughs> I told you Scorpion was gonna win, I gave you the spoiler warning, you should have seen this coming. Scorpion was going to be the winner of this fight. This should not be a surprise to anyone that Scorpion beats Scorpion. Now in all seriousness, Mortal Kombat Scorpion takes the victory, but this is a very close battle. Heck, if we didn't give Mortal Kombat Scorpion his Elder Gods champion powers, then Marvel Scorpion would have most likely won. But we did include them because we wanted to see both of these characters at their absolute best. So Mortal Kombat Scorpion takes the win, and I'll try my best to explain why. For starters, Marvel Scorpion did have a pretty big edge when it comes to speed. He's at least somewhat on par with Spidey, which makes him at least in the hypersonic ranges compared to the Mortal Kombat Scorpion at supersonic speeds. But Mortal Kombat Scorpion takes the edge in pretty much everything else. 
Marvel Scorpion may have greater speed, but Mortal Kombat Scorpion has the edge in actual mobility. His teleportation beats wall crawling any day of the week. It's also important to know that Marvel Scorpion isn't the best place mentally. He's basically insane, and he's got pretty weak mental deficiencies. On the other hand, Mortal Kombat Scorpion is highly skilled, intelligent, and very tactical. Marvel Scorpion has taken and dished out a lot of punishment, but not at the level of Elder God's champion Mortal Kombat Scorpion, who has the power to damage the Dragon King. This could make his power range anywhere from little over 70 tons of TNT to almost 8 kilotons, and that's the kind of force the Dragon King can shrug off. The Elder Gods gave Scorpion the power to actually damage him, and if that strength is still somewhat isn't enough, Scorpion can always take the fight to the Nether Realm to increase it even further. Yes, Marvel Scorpion has the Venom Symbiote, which should close the gap strength quite a lot, and that extra stat boost plus all the abilities does grant him a challenging fight, but there's one major, major flaw to the Symbiote. One of the main weaknesses of the Symbiote is Heat, and Scorpion is highly skilled at using fire attacks, so the Symbiote's chances of actually helping Scorpion are slim, especially if the fight gets taken to the Nether Realm. And if the Symbiote is killed and Scorpion's suit is destroyed, Marvel Scorpion will die right then and there just from his own mutations. So to sum it up, while Marvel Scorpion may be faster, Mortal Kombat Scorpion's edge in strength, mobility, skill, intelligence, and his ability to take advantage of the Venom Symbiote's weakness gives him the win in tonight's episode, making the winner of this battle, Mortal Kombat Scorpion. Now, if you want to see a 2 on 2 prep time rematch between Scorpion and Spider-Man versus Scorpion and Sub-Zero without factoring in the Nether Realm, all you have to do is like this video. If this video gets a combined total with the Cartoon Fight Night version of 3,000 likes, such a rematch will be put into production. Don't forget to comment down your own ideas and stay tuned as the next fighters are going to be revealed on the next episode of Cartoon Fight Club. So, what kind of fish wear we got going on? How about you give me a hand and help look for somebody who knows you? Bit of a worm! Almost, Sonic! Just a few more minutes! No use!